My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. <laughs> what are we doing? I'm going to... Oh, yes, right. So, someone did... Fucking fun. Someone did ask... Have oh, you calm down now? Right. So... <laughs> someone did ask... Uh... Beach and board. He's asked loads of questions over the, over the years, and or year, or whatever... And they're really good questions. So, his question was, or her question, I'm just going to say that because I've not, I've not, yeah, whatever, in this new world. Um, <laughs> fucking hell. Get on with it. So, why do you put piston rings at the bottom? Right, it's a good question. Uh, piston slap, stuff like that. So, a lot of people seem to have the wrong idea about piston slap and what rings functions are. So, a ring that lives in its ring groove... Right, a ring should and has to basically be able to sit sub flush inside that cylinder. Let me get this massive piston out and I will show you. Let me get this ring out. There we go. If you put your ring into your. I'm gonna have to take a picture of this. If you put your ring into your ring groove, it should sit sub flush. Let me just get a picture of this. Right, there we go. So your ring should sit sub-flush, like so. And the reason is, is because you need to be able to get the gases behind the piston. So, if we had our piston ring groove like this, and our ring and our piston, basically because of piston slap, they're basically level, so now you've got your cylinder wall and they're both making contact, piston and everything's all making contact here. There still needs to be gas pressure, because the whole thing starts to rock and move, there still needs to be gas pressure that can get behind this ring and force it against the cylinder, right? If you had a ring that basically butted up to the back, like this, and went basically flush with the cylinder like so, or even sub-flush, right? If this went sub-flush like this, this is a fucking bad drawing, you had a sub-flush like that, then once this piston moves away from the wall, the gases would just blow by, and the gases would actually basically seat the ring, and it would hold it there. So your ring now is completely fucking useless as a sealing element. It's just done. Forget it. Um, so the next thing is, um, you know, it doesn't sit back like this. It has to... It, it's allowed to sit sub-flush. Like I said, if it did sit sub-flush, there's nothing pushing it into the back there. But if it did sit sub-flush... It just fucking stay there. Now, the rings do do this, but obviously there's nothing pushing the ring back. What I'm trying to say is that your ring groove is like this, and your when your ring sits perfectly level with this side, there is a gap there, so the gases can get behind it and shove the ring back out. So, in other words, the piston ring is free-floating. It does not support the piston in any way, right? It just doesn't. The piston rings do not... And I repeat, the piston rings do not sit, uh, basically space out your piston against your cylinder wall. They just don't do that, right? Now, there is thermal expansion there, but that won't close up that gap. So, basically, the whole idea is just void straight away. If you put a piston ring, if you had your piston like this again, if you had a piston ring down here, right, this piston is still going to slap into the side of the wall, it's going to go level with it, so your piston's still hitting the side of the wall because there is that clearance around the back. So it's not going to help you. So the next thing is, is that it's this asymmetry thing. Gases are going round your piston ring groove here and here and here and pushing against your piston ring to push it out against the wall. It wouldn't be doing it here. That gas blow-by is very minimal, hopefully. <laughs> Um, so this ring is basically just using the, 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 the ring tension in it just to push against. So it, again, it's not really doing anything. As soon as those gases go behind in that ring groove, as soon as these gases go behind this ring like this, the pressure pushes it out. Now you might be thinking, well, that pressure is what basically... It, it hydraulic it pneumatically jacks the rings against the piston. Keeps it away from there a bit, you know what I mean? But the thing is, down here them gases are fuck all. So the thing would still rock anyway. We have got two rings here, or three, because you've got your oil control ring as well. You know, so it kind of does help stop it. The other thing is, 
is that you've got nothing here. There's no meat here. A lot of pistons, you know, they've basically got this cut out kind of like this. So there's not really anything around there. If we look at this Ducati piston, there's not anything here on the sides, on the side walls there to put a ring in. So you'd have to make the piston heavier. Then there's the weight of the ring as well. This is all counterproductive. But let's look at it the other way around. Right? Just imagine you're sat at work in an engineering office and someone comes up to you and says, right, we want to stop this piston rocking and stuff like that. Um, we want you to put a, you know, develop or see if there's any need to put a ring at the bottom. After 100,000 miles, these engines have worn oval, the cylinders have, but it's fuck all. And versus the cost of an extra ring, finding somewhere to put an extra ring, um, the weight of building up that cylinder so it can have a ring groove to basically have a piston ring, all of this just isn't worth it versus... I'd, if it was me, I'd be like, but after 100,000 miles, we really don't really have a problem, so why are we even doing this? You have to justify adding components. There's the cost and the weight and all that other th all that other nonsense. Now, there was pistons back in the day, especially in a lot of aviation things and stuff, where they did have a second a bottom ring. Um, a lot of the time, this is because of gas blow-by. They were trying to stop that, and they had like a two-stroke piston where it's a full-skirted piston, and they can actually have somewhere to put a ring. Um, with it, bigger engines with massive kind of piston slap and stuff, these usually engines that have massive cranks, so basically trains... They'll have a wheel here with a pivot here. They'll have a rod here. They'll have another rod here. They'll have a piston on the end like this. And what they do is they have a crosshead bearing. Massive ships have them, stuff like that. That's because this stroke is so great from here to here, right? So the bigger your stroke is, the more piston snap, the more lateral movement you're going to get because the rod is kicking right out and then it kicks right back in again. So that's a lot of side thrusting here. So what they do is they basically have a, like a secondary piston. It's a bearing. This is called a crosshead. That's a crosshead bearing. And this basically just slides inside basically rails. It's like bushings basically. And then the piston itself just goes straight in a linear fashion. So you don't get all this friction and overling and stuff. Because with massive strokes like that, you're going to greatly increase your piston slap. Not only that, is these engines are designed to go millions of miles. So you don't want to be getting a ship having to dry dock it, tear half of the deck off to pull the ship at the engine out, which is the size of a building, to then take it all apart, which takes fucking years, and literally about a year, to then stick another rebar on it. You want it to last as long as possible, where instead they can just replace the crosshead bearings instead, if they need to. But these bearings are designed to take side loadings where your piston generally isn't because it's a circle. Instead of rails where you can just have rails. And you can re replace the rails with a lot less effort. With trains, same kind of thing. This huge stroke on this wheel, like this in such a short, basically a short connecting rod, basically. Um, to take out that lateral movement, you have this crosshead bearing. So basically this takes the load. And it's easier to pop that out and put some new rails in and put some new bearings in than it is to fuck around with your piston and all the rest of it. Um, because, you know, you're, you're sealing and all the rest of it, you don't want to fuck around with. So there's all that. Like I said, the other thing is where to put it. Um, the other thing is as well is that, like I said, the, the wear on your piston really isn't, that, it really isn't that great. You know what I mean? Once you open an engine that's done 100,000 miles, yes, your cylinder's gone oval, but how much has it gone oval by? Oh, about 40 microns. Mm, fuck, that's 100,000 miles. <laughs> you know what I mean? And... We've done stuff to make, uh, to reduce that as well. Changing piston ring materials, nicosyl coating, stuff like that. The, all these things kind of help. So to have an extra ring on the bottom is one hell of a pain in the ass. It doesn't suspend the piston. The piston will still rock regardless. And, you know, that's just the way it is. One thing they do do, and you can see this in pistons like this. So you can see in this Decato, oh, fucking hell this Ducati piston, is you try and have where your ring band is, you try and have your gudgeon pin, wrist pin, whatever you want to call it, as close to it as possible, as close to the centre of mass as possible. So the centre of mass of something will be about here, because all the weight is in the crown. Oh God, that pen's horrible. Your centre of mass is about there, and you're trying to have the wrist pin, because all of this here this is just a thin fucking skirt, you know what I mean? That's just really thin. There's hardly any meat here, and all the meat's up here. 
But if you can try and pull your wrist pin closer to your ring bands and your piston crown, more is the better. Oh, we've lost a light, it's shit out of luck. That's, you can even see on these pistons, and you can't fucking see anything now, where they actually even nibble out of the bottom land there, just to get this wrist pin in. Trying to move it even closer and closer and closer, so the rocking is minimalised, do you know what I mean? Stuff like two-stroke pistons, they rock like a motherfucker, because they're quite far away, the wrist pin is quite far away from the crown. Any road, hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.